So you're looking to buy a Datejust 41 in steel as your first Rolex from the AD and you want to know which dials hold the most value in the market. Today we're going to rank each dial from worst to best in terms of market value. The steel Datejust 41 can be configured with either an Oyster or a Jubilee bracelet as well as a smooth steel or white gold fluted bezel allowing for four possible combinations. So for each dial, we'll look at the most expensive combination, which is fluted bezel and Jubilee bracelet, as well as the least expensive combination, which is smooth bezel and oyster bracelet. In the diamond dials, they only come with the fluted bezel in white gold, but we will look at the Jubilee and the oyster bracelet. And I bet you those were the wrong ones that I've just, no, they weren't, they were the right. <laughs> Okay, so Josh, let's start off with the D tier. These are watches that command up to 1250 pounds above the RRP. So the dials will have our white and silver. Yeah, so we've got the silver dial, the Roman numeral white dial, and the plain white with the plain markers. So what kind of person normally buys one of these dials? These three models at the lower tier of D, it's the lowest premium above retail price. So this is gonna be a perfect watch for anyone that's looking to get into a day just 41 with the smallest premium over retail price. Yeah, so they've got a more, a bit more budget conscious, okay. uh, but they can get the watch straight away. So out of these three dials, which one do you think you sell the most of? So out of these three dials, I would probably say the white Roman numeral, which mm -hmm. is also my favorite. I think the Roman numeral just adds a bit more to the dial. Yeah, okay, let's move into the C tier. So, okay, so. this tier is uh, watches that have a market price that is between 1,250 and 2,000 pounds over the retail price. So quite a few watches in this tier. Okay, so I'm seeing some of the more popular dials, but in the Oyster and Smooth configuration, but I'm also seeing some of the D tier dials in the Jubilee Fluted. If you're actually somebody who likes the Smooth Oyster configuration, yeah. the sportier look of the date just, you can actually get one of the more premium dials, yeah. let's say. So out of these, which combination do you sell the most of? So out of these here, looking at these configurations, I would say the most popular is the gray rhodium uh, on the smooth, mm -hmm. not massively over list price again, obviously with it being the smooth. And then if it was gonna be fluted, it would probably be most likely either, probably the black or the azuro blue, both great dials, price points spot on as well, so. So a question I have for you here, the azuro blue, and it is a different shade of blue to the yeah. baton blue, why is that in the C tier? Funnily enough, so three, four years ago, the Azuro Blue would always outperform the darker blue. And I think just as time has gone on, people prefer the plain pointers rather than the, the Roman numerals in the sense that it might be a little bit old fashioned now for the younger clientele, which I don't really agree with. But And it might just come down to the shade of blue. Obviously, the Azuro Blue is a lighter shade mm -hmm. as opposed to the Navy Blue, which maybe as much as with more. It's, but obviously, again, it's all just personal so opinion. Trends change, exactly, yeah, you know. Yeah. A few years ago, the Azuro was more popular than the Baton Blue, yeah. but now the Baton Blue outperforms the Azuro. The B tier, let's see what we've got in that. These are watches that trade in the market for between 2,000 and 2,750 above the RRP. Okay, so immediately I can see that this tier has the most watches exactly, yeah. that we've had so far. And I'm seeing that the some of the, the, the really in-demand dials are available in this tier where you've got the smooth and, and oyster combination. Yeah. Obviously this combination is less to buy at RRP, but it also commands a bit less in the market. But exactly, if yeah. you're a fan of the Wimbledon dial or the newer mint green, and I'm also seeing that you're starting to get the, in fact, all of the diamond dials yeah. are in this tier. In fact, you've got one over there still. <laughs> Get the, uh, the black. black diamond also. Have the diamond dials always sat at this kind of price point? So the diamond dials actually originally, over the past few years, have actually been a watch that goes in and around list price slash under retail price. Okay. Um, originally it was also a watch that was obviously a higher retail price as opposed to the plain dials. Mm -hmm. And they would actually use them as relationship builders where they would be a lot more accessible from the AD as opposed to something like a Wimbledon dial or Slate dial, blue dial. Clients years ago would buy the diamond dials, mm -hmm. higher retail price probably lose a bit mm -hmm. but then obviously gain long term with the AD. So now has the market changed where we're seeing actually less of the diamond dials exactly yeah which means that the price point is pushed up. Yeah a so, bit. so as of probably the past 12 to 18 months we've seen 
quite a bit of an increase in the diamond dials. Mm -hmm. One, demand, and two, obviously, the price. Mm -hmm. With demand, obviously, increases the price. Mm -hmm. um, so as of recent times, the diamond dial is a lot more in demand and is carrying a bit more for premium. Now. Okay, so out of the B tier, what watch configurations are you selling the most of at the moment? The mint green has outperformed most days just since its release. Mm -hmm. um, I would say out of all of these dials, I would still say the Wimbledon's obviously outperformed all of them. Over what, time. Over time, it's been out the longest. Um, as I say again, the diamond dials for me, if it was between these, it would be the black diamond. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, right then, let's have a look at the A tier. So A tier, we've got a little bit less, we've got so A tier is watches that are between 2,750 and 3,500 pounds above the RRP, okay? And there's only three watches yeah. in this tier. And I can see that two of them are watches that have been popular for a long time. That's yeah. the blue and the Wimbledon. But we've also got the more recent green baton dial. In recent times, what have you been selling the most of in the A tier? Yeah, so the as of recent times, the mint green has outperformed all the Datejust models. I think that's just to do with obviously green with Rolex is very popular. And it's the new thing. And it's the new thing, but also the supply for this watch is a lot less than the other configurations. But I would say over time, the Wimbledon's outperformed obviously all of them, followed closely by the Blue Dot with yeah. the same bands. I think they're all really good looking watches. I can see why they're in the A tier. Exactly, yeah. However, there is a tier above the A tier, yes. that's the S tier. Which has actually got even less watches less in this watches category. In so these are watches that are over three and a half thousand above the RRP, right? And we can see here we've got the fluted motif dials, as Rolex calls them, in the blue and the green. So already popular colors, but yeah, these exactly. have got a bit more going on. Yeah. Why do you think these two watches are in the S tier? I think it's all just based down to obviously the rarity of the watch. Uh, the supply is a lot less than the other dials. Mm -hmm. I think it's also because it's the first time Rolex have obviously introduced a dial like this into mm -hmm. the day, just yeah. with the with the motif, which is a really nice addition. Yeah, there's less in the market. Exactly, yeah. And they're, they're newer. Yeah. So, I mean, they've really maximized the look because the fluted motif dial it mimics the shapes found in the fluted bezel. Exactly, yeah. I think for the people who want to have the latest and greatest, they, they're really good. Some people maybe think they're a little bit too busy. Do you think that these dials will sit alongside the ATA dials going forward, or do you think they'll always, like for a while, be above? Yeah, so I think whenever someone comes to me and obviously asks for a day just 41 hours, say if it's going to be an everyday watch, mm -hmm. I think it is probably a bit too busy, just mm -hmm. based on the motif on the dial. I think if you were to go for a more everyday watch, I would go for either the mint green or the blue, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the, the motif version. I think they'll always carry the premium over the plain dials. Mm -hmm. That's just based on, again, just the supply of the, the, the dial will be a lot less than the other, so it'll always demand a premium. If it was your first watch, maybe they don't go for the, the fluted motif, but yeah. people who have a collection, I would and maybe already have a day just, yeah. I think this is a great addition. Yeah, as part of the collection, it's a, it's a really cool watch to have long term. Okay, now we can see the whole spread. What watch are you actually selling the most of at the moment? It can be from any kind. Yes, I would still have to go for the Jubilee Fluted Wimbledon. Whenever we get one in stock, brand new or slightly used, we always sell it the quickest. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say when the phone rings and someone wants a day just 41, it's always the Wimbledon. Slash, as of recent times, it's now the main green. So when people call up the shop, I know you don't actually do the buying yeah. at Watch Trader, but when people call up and they offer a watch for you guys to buy, what date just is it that they're offering? So nine times out of ten, when I hear the phone ringing and John's answering it, buying or trying to buy, it's always a Jubilee fluted. Nine times out of ten, that's just based on the fact that. Everyone knows the Jubilee Fluted is going to carry their largest premium. Yeah. So I think that's why they ask for it from the AD because they know that they're going to get the biggest return on them. Yeah, that makes sense. That. The last question I have for you, do you predict any changes moving forward or do you think they're going to sit in this order for a little while? Every year Rolex increase their retail prices. Mm -hmm. So maybe the S tier coming down a little bit, but I still think yeah. they'll still carry a premium above the, the plain dials. Yeah, they'll like if they move, they kind of move relative exactly, to each other. Exactly, yeah. I, I don't see a massive change in the market though. All right then, if well, Josh, okay. thank you for your time. We'll let you get back to selling. If you do want to buy a watch at Watch Trader, Josh will always look after you. Always. So as we can see, there are many possible configurations of the steel Datejust 41. Differences in the dial, bracelet, and bezel result in a large spread in the market price. You guys tend to prefer the Jubilee over the Oyster bracelet, and the smooth bezel is less requested than the fluted white gold. The most valuable dials in the market are the fluted motif in the blue and the mint green, with the plain green, blue, and Wimbledon all strong contenders. The dials that command the least premium are the white and the silver. But what do you guys think? Do you agree with the way that the dials and combinations sit in the current market, or do you predict any changes 
going into 2024. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one.